What's up? Looking at hang flight number seven here. I'm getting a hang check for my buddy behind me there. So he's picking up the back of the glider. This is just to kind of see the length that I'm looking at when I'm hanging. So I'm kind of looking for like a fist from my chest to the base tube, ideally. Uh, this harness that I'm in, I have them a little bit of an angle like this, so it's not exactly perfect. I have more like two fists on this one, but still working great for this flight, just a little bit less efficient. And so just fast forwarded through moving over there uh, up to launch. I'm just waiting for um, clearance. So there's a paragliding launch up here at Eliminator, just a little bit down to the left if you're looking down the hill like that. And so I just wanted to make sure that uh, taking off paraglider wasn't going to be my way, weren't going to be in the pattern, and here we go. So really good cycles here. I'm, I'm going to play some of the audio from the flight in the background. I think I'll just talk over it, but the lift I was getting here was amazing. We saw a crow soar up and just do like 2,000 feet in like 30 seconds just out here in the front in front of what everything was going on. And so just really good lifting surging conditions right now. Not so much necessarily like a headland wind, but really like a thermic lift. So we got that hot sun coming down, blasting heat onto the ground and just generating hot air on the ground that wants to rise up to the colder air on top. Decent wraps, lapse rate on this day, not amazing, but still pretty solid. And so all throughout here, I was getting lift. I've never gotten lift like this through this section. And so this was amazing. I was like, wow, like I'm really getting up. You can hear my stoke in my voice a little bit if you can hear that in the background, but I'm just like pumped. I'm getting lift, like the feeling of getting lift is so, so amazing. And I'm just blown away just constantly going up here. I mean, I'm not really dropping down that much and it feels amazing. I think if I had a higher performance setup and I had way more skill, I could have done a couple loops here. We saw some paragliders doing some loops here, getting lift and potentially could have even worked back towards launch on this particular day if I was on the right cycle. I mean, it was still a decent lift day, but not a fantastic. And so if you remember from my other videos, I'm usually farther to the right here and that's just because I'm lower, want to make sure I get below those power line towers. But I had so much lift on this initial section here, I'm just able to get up and just fly directly over the highest point on those high, high, uh, high power, high voltage, long transmission lines. And so just really amazing conditions that I had here starting out. And yeah, cruising out, um, like looking down at people on the road, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like what's going on? Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, so just super stoked on all that. I'm coming out here, um, cruising. Like I've never even been over this before. Usually I'm way more to the right. I'm just, I have to beeline directly for that roundhouse, but I'm able to just cruise all the way straight out here. And it's just amazing. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go directly over what we call the antenna farm. So that's those uh, antennas kind of directly blocked my body right now um, on the top of that hill. So there's a kind of a road circling around it there. And yeah, so you can just kind of see those antennas rising up there. There's a couple paragliders in the air here. Actually, it turns out a couple of these were tandem. I uh, saw them land after I landed, super cool. Yeah, so never been here, uncharted territory for me and I'm just like stoked. Um, a little bit of hindsight, I potentially maybe shouldn't have gone here. Um, the thermals are usually stronger the higher up you are from where they're being generated. And so one possibility that I could have done was shoot just straight for the thermal in front of the roundhouse because I would have been much higher up in where that thermal is forming and potentially getting stronger. But on this particular flight, um, it crossed my mind for a second, but I was really just like, I want to check out a new area. Maybe not the best decision, again, seventh flight. So still learning. Um, if I had to do it over again, I may consider going over to the roundhouse area, but also I think I had a decent shot of getting lift here, especially seeing paragliders in this area. And yeah, they don't want to make my same mistakes as last time. So I did like one little turn here and I'm like, okay, like I'm not cruising. Love seeing the shadow on the ground there down on my right a little bit. Um, had to turn towards the hill here. Also not what you want to do, but I'm above it. So I'll stand by that decision and own it. And yeah, realized I was getting, you know, I'm not gaining a ton of lift here. And so I'm like, okay, like I'm just going to fly out towards the roundhouse, get back on that thermal. And that's kind of where I circle back to that idea of maybe I should have just gone straight for the thermal that I'm going for right now, because I potentially could have gotten into a better position on it and just gotten a bunch of lift there. But from what we saw from the paragliders in the air before I launched, um, when I was waiting to launch, didn't look like they were really soaring up like crazy. Like they weren't getting great lift like you can see at this site on a great day. And so I don't even know if it would have helped and I was glad to check out the new terrain. So stand by that decision. 
And yeah, I'm getting some lift through here. Just like really excited. Um, very cool to like hear the variometer beeping. Um, I think that the variometer might have led me to make some poor decisions towards the end of this flight and led to a undesirable landing, but the variometer treated me well throughout this flight. I'm just, I think when I was descending, it might've switched to some weird beeping mode. And so got some more thinking to do about what exactly caused that there. And yeah, so this is kind of my first time, like really flying close proximity to other uh, people in the air on ultralights. And so paragliders here can kind of see them. Um, I was really trying to think about my rules for the road. Um, it's similar to driving on a car road in the US where you want to, uh, if you're going head onto someone, you both turn right away, or I guess boat would be a better analogy. If you're, I was just reading my paragliding book. If you're overtaking somebody from behind, it's the opposite of a car in the US and you want to go to pass on their right. So not what you would want to do on a highway in the US, even though that seems to be the only way that people pass around where I live at least. And yeah, so just those general rules of the road, uh, thinking about, okay, I don't wanna have a mid-air collision and like the close rate is faster and scarier than I thought here. So just like you can, you saw like a minute ago or 30 seconds ago, uh, that other paraglider just in the corner of the frame here. Uh, you can see me looking a little bit and I'm just looking um, at them. They, they feel close and like when you're heading in the same direction, maybe not even head on, but just roughly the same direction as another ultralight in the air, like a paraglider, the close rate is pretty, insane feeling just because you don't think about moving that fast as high up from the ground but then you get that relative object at the same altitude as you and it really changes the perspective and i mean the paraglider is moving pretty slow but I'm, I'm maybe going 25 miles an hour so the close rate is like probably 40 plus miles an hour because i'd assume they're going about 15 10 15 and the hang glider that i'm on could go much faster than 25 if i was really pulled in but yeah just for this like kind of slow cruising about 25 miles an hour and so yeah, just doing a couple circles here. Um, this is, if you watched uh, two videos ago, uh, or one video ago, my super low flight, like this is kind of where I was like, just like barely skimming over like a rock, like much better position here, much more comfortable. I'm doing loops. This is my longest flight, longest airtime. Very excited to get some lift and some soaring, even if it wasn't like top tier world-class, like still really excited to get some lift here and just really excited on that. And so I think Willie was on the radio with me here. He was, he took off like 10 minutes before me. He's like farther down, but he's looking at me. And I think at one point here, he's like, okay, like maybe try heading towards Parma to try and get some lift over there. Cause he was getting lift over there. And so I think at this point is pretty close to where I'm like, all right, I'm going to give up on this thermal activity here. This kind of cruise down. I got a bunch of altitude so I can kind of choose to do whatever I want. Like I could have tried like one more turn maybe here, or I could just make a beeline for Parma, try to figure out some lift down there, see what's going on. And so yeah, just again, look at this perspective. I am so much higher up than those other low flights in some of my previous videos. And it's just a much, much more comforting, exciting feeling. And just the feeling of getting the lift, it's kind of feels like surfing when you're standing up on a wave and you should, you're getting that raw power from the earth's energy or like the sun earth energy. And it's just a different magical type of feeling. It's different than like skiing where you know, you're like, okay, it's just gravity giving me the power here. But like surfing or this like soaring feeling where you're actually like getting an energy just kind of transferred to you the way that you're moving through it. It's a really amazing feeling. And I don't even know if I'm fully describing it to how it really feels to me. It's just one of those things that I just highly recommend you find some way to experience probably surfing on like a wave storm or something is the easiest way to initially feel that but um if you have the opportunity i highly recommend hang gliding just an amazing feeling getting up there and soaring in the air and yeah so cruising out over these houses just i gotta keep on running back that man i am so much higher up in a much much better position than i have been in a couple previous flights and just much more confident calm feeling like i'm excited i'm like okay i have potential to do different things in the air here i can try some turns i can practice my stalls i can practice a stalled turn and just a lot more options and it just makes me kind of in some ways wish that i had made different decisions in previous flights to end up in a better altitude position like this but again sometimes you just don't get that lift in this flight i was lucky to just get lift without really doing great thermaling i just kind of the cruise out to like the thermaling area just got good lift and that was really nice 
And see, so yeah, I'm cruising here. I'm kind of thinking, all right, like, do I have to go straight for the landing field? Can I just keep on cruising here? Uh, I was trying to look for Willie because I knew he was in the air. And eventually I spotted him, he's to my left here. And actually it's pretty hard to pick up on the video, but you can see him a little bit at some points here, kind of to my left. He's doing a couple loops over that ridge, kind of behind where I'm gonna land. And so here, just doing some fun little turns. Um, I pull in a little bit, do some like bank turns. And then I try to do a stall turn at one point here as well. And you know, just kind of showing off we're above the houses now above the road um, feeling good got plenty of altitude to get to my landing zone this is kind of my chance and opportunity to do a little bit of turning without worrying too much about lift but then on the flip side i still am getting a little bit of lift here so i'm really excited because hey that means i can step in the air longer and yeah so this flight like i said longest flight that i've done so far and you know just watching other pilots talking to other pilots like this is still a really short flight what I've heard a lot of pilots call a sled, sled ride, where you're essentially just cruising down the gradient of altitude, not really getting that lift. It's kind of just like you're cruising down a sled on the snow from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill and not really altering that just kind of standard glide slope trajectory that you would get with your potential energy from your starting altitude. And so yeah, just cruising out here. Again, super great day out in Santa Barbara, amazing weather. It actually ended up getting cloudier a little bit later in this day, but it was super good when I was in the air. I really enjoyed that. And yeah, so there's another pilot that was waiting to launch this whole time. And he actually ended up not launching because the, the, the takeoff conditions weren't right. He didn't get that right pattern, uh, didn't get a good cycle and chose not to launch. He probably could have launched if he had went before me. It would definitely could have launched if he went before me. We had a lot of good launch cycles, but just weren't seeing a lot of lift. And so, like I said, kind of coming back to that sled ride mentality of, is it even worth launching for a 10 minute flight? For me, my seventh flight, mountain flight, oh yeah, it's definitely worth it. Like I'll get every second of air time that I can possibly get. But if you've been doing this for 20 plus years, maybe a 10 minute flight isn't really worth, you know, the logistics of getting your glider back up to the top or getting a ride back up to the top if your car is already at the top. And so there's kind of a different decision calculus of, is it worth launching or not? Um, and yeah, I think it'll be many, many flights in the future for me before I would ever make a decision like that if I had good a launch cycle. I mean, it really comes back to, is there a good launch cycle? Do I think I'll be able to safely land? Is it gonna be too much sync where I can't get to the landing zone safely? Like, of course, would never wanna launch in that situation. But there is a decent amount of situations that I've seen where you could launch and know that you're gonna have a sled ride. And so I heard beeping on the varimeter coming into here and I thought I was getting a little bit of lift and that's the issue I was talking about. And so I way, way overshot this landing. I went way too far here. I'm coming in way too short and basically screwed. And so my feet clipped there. I try a flare, didn't work out. I'll pull it back to slow motion, but that was pretty dang painful. My left shoulder is still hurting. Um, and the biggest problem was my downwind leg, I overshot. Um, you can see I'm not really looking at the cone. I should be looking at the cone the whole time. And I kind of lost that situational awareness. And not to blame the equipment, because the blame is totally on me, but I think part of what factored into that for me personally on this flight was I did hear that beeping of the varimeter thinking I was getting lift. And so I was like, oh, I'm still getting lift. Like I need to go farther because I have to get farther away. Otherwise I'm gonna land too high on the hill. And in hindsight, that just wasn't the right thinking. I should have just kept my eye on the cone and gone higher up on the hill if need be. Because as you can see, I ended up way below the hill, not where I wanna be, um, ended up, injuring myself. Um, this is now Wednesday and it's been, you know, four days since this happened, three days since this happened. And yeah, I'm still injured. I'm very excited to rehab and get back out there. Not discouraged from hang gliding at all, but um, just sucks dealing with an injury and I'm excited to get back out there. And so I really hope you enjoy watching in my talk through. Um, like and subscribe for more videos and um, hopefully my shoulders are covered soon and I got some more videos to show you guys. Thanks.